Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are back. We've been gone for a few days. I was visiting family. My producer was visiting family. Call your family guys. Make sure you keep in touch with them. So we're going to be talking about Bolt and why I've stopped using it and why you should be using Cursor instead in this video. Now, I'm not really going to be programming or anything like that today. I will show you how I set things up and how I prompt, etc. But I'm not going to be making anything today. But just for some clarity, let's have a little look at a little sneak peek at what I made last night and what we'll be making a video on very, very soon. So this is findabusinessuk.com. Now, the reason that I chose to do this specific uh, website is because findatradespersonisland.com is popping off right now. So if I just go to Ahrefs here, can't go to Ahrefs because the bill hasn't been paid. So let's go to Search Console and we'll go to findatradespersonisland.com. Now, there, there's this thing with YouTubers, okay? And I don't want to call anyone out specifically, but there was a YouTuber who very recently made a one-page website and then drove people to that website from their video and then claimed that that traffic was real, okay? That's not the case here. This is real traffic. So you can see a spike here when a lot of people were searching for the website because I made a video about the website. However, all of this traffic here is completely real and legitimate traffic. 1.5 thousand impressions a day. Like it is going up and down, it's kind of fluctuating a little bit. I would have wanted it to just keep going up and up and up, of course, but you know, this is SEO at the end of the day. So the way that we know that it's uh, not fake, by the way, is the keywords. You can see there are thousands and thousands of keywords here. And there's no way that my subscribers are searching for plumbers in Newcastle West, okay? I'll tell you that much for free. There's no way that my subscribers are searching for solar panels in Limerick or solar panels in Sligo, okay? Another way that we can tell that these are real is if I go on countries and sort by impressions, there is no way that 90% of my viewers are from Ireland, okay? It's just not possible. The reason all of these impressions are coming from Ireland, the US, and the UK because Ireland, the US, and the UK are the countries in the world that are most likely to either have a town with the same name. So for example, there is a town or a city in the UK called Newcastle, okay? Um, or they're also likely to have a family member in Ireland or just, you know, be visiting Ireland. The UK and the US, especially the US, it's very, very common for people to live in the US, but have family in Ireland. And, you know, maybe they're trying to search for an elderly family member. You know, we don't really know, but that's how we can tell that these are real impressions, okay? There's absolutely no way that 23,700 people, not even that many people have watched the video about this website. So this is real legitimate traffic. And the reason I chose this website specifically to kind of do a repeat is because this is by far the most successful website that I've made in the last few weeks. We will have a video probably tomorrow or the day after talking about all of the websites I've made recently, showing some results, etc. But for now, let's just focus on this method. So we're going to be using cursor instead of bolt, okay? And the reason is, I'll, I'll, I'll explain the reason now. Bolt deletes old code when um, replacing with new code. Bolt randomly changes the entire project near completion. Bolt is kind of trash. So Bolt was really, really good. It was like a stepping stone for me anyway, personally, to understand how to go from code to an actual launched website. Now, this website here, findabusinessuk.com, I made this website in under two hours. Just for some context, let me just show you how many pages it potentially has. I think it actually has more than that, more than this, okay? So there are 4,000 categories here, you can see, 4,000 categories. This is just all of the categories that you can find on Google My Business. This is from an official source. I found this on Google, it didn't take very long, you can find it if you want. And then times, there are 43,000 towns in the UK. So we have up to, and I think there are actually more pages than this, 172 million pages, okay, on this website. There are actually more pages than that, and I'll show you exactly why. If I go on Accountant, Shropshire, and then Adany, just randomly, right, and search. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take me to this page here, okay? So 
there are 172 million combinations of these pages. If I click on one of these websites, you'll see eventually this is also a page in itself. So for every 172 million pages that exist, there are up to 100 results. So <laughs> there are probably, I would guess, I don't actually know, but probably 17 billion pages on this website, <laughs> I think. Don't quote me on that, okay? But I think there are around 172 billion pages on this website. Now, I don't actually know the amount of pages here because it's all dynamically generated. So when I click this, that is when the content is generated. However, however, despite the fact that they don't exist yet, all of these pages can be indexed by Google because Google the crawlers, what they do is they render this content. So remember, this was released last night, probably about eight hours ago. So Site Finder Business UK, you can see we already have all of these pages indexed on Google. So I'm expecting this um, to do very, very well. Now I'm gonna talk about how I did this in this video because there, there's actually a really, really interesting method here that I, I really wanna talk about. But first of all, let's just get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is, this is Cursor, okay? Let's just go to cursor.sh. Cursor, I would recommend getting premium because you get fast mode and you get to use premium models. Now, all we do here, okay, once we're on inside a folder, okay, so I've already done open folder, create a new folder. We're inside example video, right? So I'm gonna do control K and I'm gonna say, make me a new Next.js project. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me the command to start a new Next.js project. Now you don't have to use O1 Mini here, I just use O1 Mini, um, I'm not really sure why. If it doesn't have a dot here, what I want you to do is dot, uh, space, dot like that. What, that. what this does is it puts your project inside its current directory, okay? And then you just wanna spam enter so it creates it. So this is now done. So now we have a new Next.js project right here. You now have everything you need to create what you want, but I'm gonna give you a few tips here, okay? So you're all familiar with this prompt. You all have access to this prompt. The prompting document will be inside the description of this video alongside the walkthrough to make this with Bolt, okay? But now we're gonna start making things with cursor instead. So what you can actually do is you can copy the prompt, right click here, new file, and call it roadmap.md, and then control V, control S to save the prompt, okay? So now you can refer to this at any moment in time. So if I do control shift I, this opens the composer, and you can do at roadmap like that. And now you are talking to the prompt. And another really good thing about that is I'm not 100% sure how Bolt works. I don't know if it keeps the original prompt forever or, you know, there are loads of factors there that I just, they're not in my control. However, with Cursor, I can always refer back to the prompt whenever the hell I want, which is much more effective. Now, another thing here, and I'd recommend doing this from the beginning, is you press new folder, write data, and then find a CSV, okay? so. All I did was I just went on UK Towns CSV GitHub like that, okay? And then just found this, took me about two minutes. Press raw here, our favorite. And then look, we actually have 43,000 English towns here. So what you can do is you can grab a section of this, a little slice, press new and write towns.csv and then paste this here. So now that's a referring point for cursor to use as well at any time, because you can, again, control shift I, you can do at towns.csv. So you, now you're referring to the town CSV when you're writing, okay? So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. We're gonna prompt cursor, but we're not actually gonna build anything in today's video just because you know this stuff does take a little bit of time. So we also have this list of Google My Business categories. So again, we'll do plus here and we'll say categories.csv and then we'll paste this like that. And now we have categories, towns, and a roadmap, right? That's actually all you need if you think about it. Now you'd have to change this prompt depending on what you're doing. So for example, the uh, location code uh, would have to change just because at the moment it's 2380, which is island. So I'd have to change this to whatever the UK code is, whatever the US code is. 
whatever you're doing, okay? But just to be honest, like 99% of this prompt is universal, but you can see it does say things like find a tradesperson in Ireland and blah, blah, blah. So just change the things in the prompt that you need to change, add data, and then literally control shift I, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say at roadmap.md, please follow this roadmap as carefully as possible, making sure to maximize uh, the programmatic uh, SEO at all turns, make sure to abuse the fact that Google is more likely to rank content that has exact phrase match such as best X in Y or reviews of X business uh, in Y region, etc. Oh, I just pressed enter. I wasn't supposed to press enter. So we'll just press cancel chat. So we'll just copy this again. And then we'll say the data you need is inside. And then I'm just going to do at data. Uh, and then at towns is a list of all the towns and count and their counties in the UK. And then at category is a list of Google My Business categories. Create a modern um, directory website using dynamically generated content and SSR. Um, only make static pages for each region. Everything else should be should be dynamically generated. All right, and then we'll hit enter here and just watch how effective this is, okay? Compared to something like Bolt. So we're using 3.5 Sonnet. I probably should mention that. At the bottom here, you're gonna wanna select 3.5 Sonnet 2024, 10, 22. This thing is insane, okay? It's way better than Bolt. You can see already, Bolt does probably 10% of this at one time, whereas this, what this does is it fully generates, you know, the, pretty much the entire thing in one prompt. Now, it doesn't quite work in one prompt, obviously, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly how to, how to actually get this to do what you want it to do. So once this is done, what you wanna do is, first of all, you just wanna press accept all, and then literally just keep writing Continue full implementation. Now I said we weren't gonna actually code in this video, so I'm gonna try and be tempt, I, I have to try and resist temptation to now make this entire thing. Um, we're not gonna make this entire thing, okay? I'll say that right now. But I'll just get it to a point where we can see kind of how quick and easy this actually is. So now it's creating additional um, components and pages. So now it's creating business listing components. Now it's creating breadcrumbs. I didn't even tell it to do that, so that's pretty cool. Breadcrumbs, just so you know, they're uh, like the things at the top so you know where you are on a website. Let's create a related categories locations component. Perfect. And now I'm gonna even let you on all in on another secret. If you're watching all the way to kind of this point in the video, I'm gonna show you something that has really impressed me, okay? So if I, again, if I do site findabusinessuk.com, you might notice that a lot of these, if I scroll down, okay, you can see a lot of them, in fact, 322 of them are London, right? And you might be thinking, why are they all London? That's kind of weird. And then if I go here, all of these will be London as well. Look, London, 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 London. You might be thinking, why the hell is it like that? Well, that's kind of weird. Maybe London's the most popular. That's not actually the reason. The reason is I used something called Omega Indexer, okay? Now, I've used this before. It does work fairly well, and it's not that expensive either. All you do is campaigns, new campaign, and then call it like drip feed or whatever, and then just paste your links here and then press submit, and it will actually help you get indexed. So normally what people do is they have a sitemap, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, for some reason, the sitemap wasn't working uh, last night, so I just decided to use Omega Indexer instead. And I got all of the locations indexed. This is what, th these are the specific pages I was trying to get indexed were these pages here. And then I just decided to post London just as a kind of experiment because obviously London is, because obviously London is the biggest city in the UK. So I, you know, I'm trying to get the most traffic possible in the shortest amount of time. So it makes sense to do, to do London. So a mega indexer is very, very good guys. So I'm just gonna do one more. I'm gonna say, please continue 
full implementation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run npm run dev. And I don't know how long we've been recording, but so we've been recording 17 minutes. I've probably been doing this for much less than that. So let's actually see where we're at in probably like 10 minutes, right? So let's see. So it's creating the home page now. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted because then we can actually see, you know, what's happening. Get popular categories. Perfect. Beautiful. Oh, this is really, really good. It's so much better than Bolt. It just gets it. Like, I can't really explain why, but it, it's just better than Bolt. The, the process for posting is kind of the same as well. So we'll just, we'll just run this here. Well, let's just see what happens. So first of all, we'll install everything. There's an error here just because it's got page and app, which kind of messes up the, the system. Yeah, I can't help myself. It's so true. So let's just delete the pages directory here. The reason that is, is because we're technically an app. So it gets a bit messed up. So we'll accept all here. And then now if we run npm run dev, I believe this should work. Okay, so that's fine. We've just got a couple of more errors here and then we should, uh, should be able to see what it's got. So please fix this error. This is a very common error. It's something to do with having use client written at the top of each one. I don't know why it can't just, yeah, it's there. Why can't it just learn to do that? Why do I always have to tell it to do that? Come on, man. Like, how difficult is it? God, stupid AI, man. <laughs> I'll just learn how to code. Like, every time it's the same errors over and over and over again. Compiling not found, right? Oh, there we go. So look, we already have this. Obviously, it doesn't look the best, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see how you know we, we, we've built this in a very short amount of time, OK? Now, there's obviously a lot of things missing here. We need to add a .m file with our data for SEO things. And you know, there's a lot missing, OK? I'm not saying this is complete. But in such a small amount of time to have something like this without using Bolt. You did it in about 12 minutes. Yeah, so we got here in 12 minutes, guys. Um, and this has the potential to have 100 whatever, 17 billion, however many pages this thing will have in the end, OK? So yeah, I think we'll leave the video there, guys. I just wanted to talk about this and why I'm using Cursor now instead of Bolt. But the really cool thing is, the, the best thing about Cursor versus Bolt is that now this project is saved exactly as it is now. And once I've launched it, it's on GitHub, and I can take it from GitHub, open it in Cursor, and edit it, and then push the changes back to GitHub, and there's no... I'm not going to lose anything. With Bolt, once you close Bolt, it's gone. I don't know what it is. It feels like you've just lost something. But with this, you never lose that, which is the really, really good thing about this. Anyway, guys, we'll leave the video there. We're going to be talking a little bit more about Cursor in some videos to come. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. If you want to know about the most exciting SEO possibility in 2025, click this video now.